Thanks so much for watching AM Northwest this morning. We've heard of people coming out of comas to say goodbye before they die. But what really happens at the end of life? Here to explain the latest research, we welcome University of Oregon neuroscience professor and the author of Infinite Awareness, Dr. Marjorie Wollacott. Good to have you with us again. Thank you, Helen. I explain to me the term um, terminal lucidity. So that is when somebody who has Alzheimer's disease or dementia or some other disease that has permanently affected their brain in the last hours of life comes back to lucidity and says goodbye to their family and friends and then they die. And of course we don't have a lot of explanation for that. And is it only people who have brain disease, not, not maybe somebody else that is passing away slowly? Um, is it only brain I would disease? say when you say passing away slowly, what we mean is that they've really lost their cognitive function. It could be through a stroke, it could right. be through other things like that, right. so yes. So how often does that happen? And describe instances where you've heard of that happening. Yeah. So about five to 10% of the people with Alzheimer's or some other cases like going into a coma have this happen. And I would say that the cases are actually very, very fascinating. One of the cases that I remember was of a boy who was five years old he had a malignant brain tumor and he had gone into a coma for three weeks and his family was very concerned and they were always around his bedside right. and so on the advice of their minister they said to the little boy they said we're gonna really miss you but you have our permission to die and suddenly and unexpectedly the boy comes out of the coma he thanks the parents for letting him go and then he says I'm gonna die soon and he dies the next day Wow mm -hmm. well, is there research into why this happens or how it happens there's a lot of research just beginning to like blossom right now with the neuroscience world and so yeah. one of the first studies that was done was like about four years ago by a man named Peter Fennick from England. And he did what is called a prospective study, which is like the gold standard of studies in this area of medicine, where you take a group of hospices and nursing homes and you have everyone, doctors, nurses, caregivers, report all of the cases of this type throughout that entire year. So you can really quantify how often it happens. And what they found was that when they asked questions like, so um, how often do you find a person that's gone into a deep coma come out in the last hours of life and say goodbye before they die they found out that something like 80 percent of the caregivers and hospital people said at least one of those cases occurred during that year in the hospital setting you're kidding me yeah. do we know what why that happens is it is it because of the drugs they're on <laughs> so that's obviously as a neuroscientist that's what I used to think that it was yeah. probably the drugs or they right. were hallucinating but in fact what they're showing now is that these people are not on drugs it's simply that something seems to happen in those last hours of life where they suddenly are able to communicate again as if the Alzheimer's or the coma is no longer affecting them in those last hours of life. Is that because Alzheimer's uh, also works where people all of a sudden come back like uh, my mom has dementia and I sometimes mm -hmm. she'll bring up something that happened 20 years ago as if it's happening right now. Right and that's typically the case as if they don't really have an ability to actually um, orient themselves to the current time and in right. fact I think one of the most interesting things is the latest research that's being done is actually an ongoing study by a man named Alexander Batiani, and it's called the European Study of Terminal Lucidity. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to say, okay, we have now hospitals that have the most modern diagnostic techniques, the most modern technical tools. Will we still find terminal lucidity these days? And in fact, what he has been showing with questionnaires that are going out to like 4,500 people around Europe is that that in fact, he's finding that it still occurs in about 10% of people with Alzheimer's disease or similar types of dementia or stroke or comas. And he's also finding that they can quantify that it occurs in the last 24 hours before they die. And in addition, that it typically occurs for about 30 minutes to like two hours during that last day of their life as well. So he's getting very, very interesting quantitative data about the actual occurrence of this. You also uh, mentioned too that sometimes relatives of someone who's passed away have mentioned that they have dreamed that that person who passed came to them in that dream. Right. And that happens more often. 
exactly. than we think. And more often than we think. So yeah. again, in that Peter Fenwick study, they actually showed that about 48% of the caregivers actually found that sort of thing happening during that one-year prospective study. And in fact, they gave very interesting examples, which are like one that I love to talk about, which is by a doctor, a forensic pathologist named Janice Amatuzio. And she said that one night she came to her hospital shift and the hospital chaplain came up to her and he said, do you know how they found that young man who died in the automobile accident last night? And she said, well, yes, the Coon Rapids police actually found him in a frozen creek bed um, where his car had turned over um, at 4.45 in the morning. And he said, no, no, how did they really find him? And she said, um, I don't know. And he said, well, I talked to the dead man's wife. And she, in the middle of the night, had a dream where he came to her bedside and he apologized. And he said, I'm sorry, I was in a car accident and my car can't be seen from the road. It's near our house in a ravine. She wakes what? up at 4.20 a.m. She calls the police. She tells them what she dreamed. They find his body 20 minutes later. Now, see, here is it me thinking that she has something to do with his death. <laughs> <laughs> I got so, okay. And, and of course, give I mean, me another example that I might, I might not. I don't know that I trust that woman. Well, the beauty is that Amatuzio and the police did notice that there was no, no way that she okay. could cause the death. But I mean, there are certainly many other cases where the person actually um, comes at um, to the family at a distance. In fact, I should say that my own um, husband had. An an example where his father came to him. His father was in fact dying of Alzheimer's. He hit his head in the middle of the night oh, wow. um, as he fell and he came to my husband and he said, my time on this earth is over. And wow. my husband didn't know what the voice was, but it was right. just as he was going to sleep. And later on, the next morning, he finds his sister calls and says that his father had just passed away that night. And there was research being done into, the, into that as well. Absolutely. So the same sort of studies are being done where they carefully document how many people actually report this in their families during a year and again it was like 48 percent of the hospital workers noted that family of people who died had this particular thing happen to them that is fascinating what can what can we take from this well I think one of the things I take from it is that it, my previous understanding as a neuroscientist about um, the consciousness actually surviving the brain saying no it can't survive the death of the brain is changing and I believe now that perhaps consciousness really does survive the death of the brain the other thing that I find is really interesting is Alex Batiani's understanding of what's really going on, for example, with terminal lucidity and people with Alzheimer's. He says, what if the brain does not actually produce the mind, but in fact, maybe the brain is an organ of the mind that the mind uses. And he says, perhaps in a person with Alzheimer's, their mind is like the sun in eclipse, and the brain is like the moon obscuring the sun. The sick brain obscures the sun of the mind. And he says, if that's the case, maybe when we get Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. in fact, what's happening is that we actually have a perfectly normal conscious self, but because of its association with a sick brain, it can't express itself clearly. And when we die, perhaps the conscious self, as it peels itself away from the sick brain, suddenly has the ability to remember, to think, and express itself. And that's what we see in those first, in those last hours wow. of life. Fascinating. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's really incredible. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we've got lots more coming up.